This is the story of three heroes whose efforts helped ensure the world today is dramatically better than it may have otherwise been. The story is not an easy one to tell, involving many other players, from geophysicists and atmospheric chemists to environmental activists, politicians and bureaucrats. But it all started here, with a common household fridge, or rather, what fueled it. The earliest fridges were powered by dangerous toxic gases, but humans are nothing if not great innovators. And so, in 1928, the world welcomed chlorofluorocarbons. CFCs proved a flawless, non-toxic coolant system, and over the next 60 years, they found their way into everything. But little did we know that this super substance was doing more than cooling our food and fixing our hair. As CFCs moved skyward, interacting with ultraviolet radiation, chlorine gas would break free and set off a series of chemical reactions that destroy the atmospheric layer protecting us from solar radiation, the ozone. Atmospheric chemists had been aware of the effect CFCs could have on the atmosphere since 1974, but had expected depletion to happen slowly across many decades. And the corporate incentive to not recognize the threat of CFCs was overwhelming. Then everything changed. Joe Farman and his team at the British Antarctic Survey measured a loss of ozone above Antarctica, and this loss was far greater than anyone had expected. They'd discovered an ozone hole larger in size than Antarctica. It was atmospheric chemist Susan Solomon that would determine the hole's cause. The sunlit clouds that form only in the coldest airs were speeding up destructive CFC reactions. With this new data, projections indicated the global ozone would collapse by 2050, leaving the planet fully exposed to damaging radiation that would quickly alter the DNA of all life on Earth. By 2070, we'd see ecological devastation and the collapse of agriculture. The revelation shocked the world into action. The international community came together to ban CFCs. On the 16th of September, 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed. Governments were now faced with having to phase 100 different chemicals out of 240 industrial sectors. Stephen Anderson from the US Environmental Protection Agency, the so-called can-do man, made it happen, working tirelessly with industry to develop hundreds of cutting-edge CFC-free technologies. The treaty worked. Production of CFCs ground to a halt. Their concentration in the atmosphere began to drop and the ozone hole is now closing. Indeed, the Montreal Protocol has been described as perhaps the single most successful international agreement to date, and without the contributions of Farman, Solomon, and Anderson, it may never have happened. That's why this year, we celebrate them with the Future of Life Award, honoring individuals who have steered the course of history away from disaster without having received much public recognition at the time. The protocol is much needed proof that the world is capable of coming together to solve the climate crisis and more generally, tackle global catastrophic threats. In a time of widespread pessimism about humanity's prospects, this should give us cause for optimism.